subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The highlight of this week's science news was ISRO's Chandrayaan-2 confirming the presence of water on moon. But what were some of the other exciting science stories this week? On this episode of Scientifics, I, Mohana Basu, take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. Just like humans have specific greetings to start and end a conversation, apes seem to do something similar to the human behavior of saying hello and goodbye. Researchers documented apes purposefully using signals to start and end conversations. Such behavior had not been seen outside of the human species until now. Social and power dynamics between the interacting apes also affected the communication efforts which according to the researchers mirrors patterns similar to human politeness. Sharing intentions and working together on a common goal leads to a mutual sense of obligation. This social behavior was long thought to be unique to humans. After analyzing 1,242 interactions within groups of bonobos and chimpanzees in zoos, the researchers found that the apes frequently gaze and communicate with each other to start and end interactions. In this video, two chimpanzees are entering a social grooming activity. Matingo, the male, approaches Makuri, a female, both mutually gaze at each other and then Makuri uses a series of gestures, first attempting to grab Madingo, then touching his shoulder and back, finally grabbing and pulling him at his hips. Makuri then starts grooming him on his shoulder once he is sitting in close proximity. This the researchers describe as an entry into an interaction. Similarly, this video shows an exit from an interaction. Kume, a male, is engaging in chase play with Kalibi, another male. Kalibi then stops to run and turns around, upon which the exit phase of the interaction starts. The two mutually gaze at each other. Kalibi attempts to reinstate the play interaction, but Kume pushes his head, upon which Kalibi grabs the hand by which Kume is holding onto Kalibi's head. Kume then drops his hand. The two hold hands for a moment while gazing at each other again. They then perform a head-on-head -head while facing each other. Kalibi then sits down. Kume walks away. Kalibi gazes one more time at Kume, walking away. And then the interaction stops. The closer the apes are to each other, the shorter the duration of their entry and exit phases. Also this week, scientists have confirmed that the remains from a thousand-year-old grave from Finland that was long assumed to be of a woman were actually of a non-binary person. The findings from the grave suggest that contrary to popular beliefs about gender roles in ancient European civilizations, non-binary people were respected members of their communities. Non-binary is an umbrella term for gender identities that are not exclusively masculine or feminine. Non-binary people may identify as belonging to a third gender or more than one gender or may consider themselves to not belong to any gender. According to the DNA analysis of the Iron Age grave in Finland, the remains belong to a high-status non-binary person. The grave contained jewellery such as brooches as well as fragments of woolen clothing which suggested that the dead person was dressed in feminine costume of the time. However, there was a hitless sword placed on the person's left side which was often associated with masculinity at the time. DNA analysis showed that the person had what is known as the Klinefelter syndrome. Usually, a female has two X chromosomes and a male has one X and one Y chromosome. In Klinefelter syndrome, males born with Klinefelter syndrome may have low testosterone and reduced muscle mass, facial hair and body hair.
Also this week, scientists have found that transferring gut microbes from younger mice into that of older mice can reverse brain aging and advance that paves the way for microbial based interventions to slow down brain aging and associated cognitive problems. Researchers across the world are increasingly suggesting that the microbes that live in our gut have a larger role to play in the body's overall health than what is currently understood. In this study, the team showed that by transplanting microbes from young into old animals, they could rejuvenate aspects of brain and immune function. The team also found evidence of improved learning ability and cognitive function in the animals, although they acknowledged that much more work is needed to see how these findings could be translated in humans. According to the team, the study opens up possibilities in the future to modulate gut microbiota as a therapeutic target to influence brain health. Meanwhile, scientists have discovered a new carnivorous plant in North America which uses tall flowering stems coated with sticky hairs that trap small insects. The plant acquires more than half of its nitrogen, one of the key nutrients for plants, by digesting these insects. The species was already known to scientists as Triantha occidentalis. It grows in wetlands and bogs in the northern US. The team also found out how the plant differentiates its food from insects that are essential for the plant to pollinate. The plant's glandular hairs are not very sticky and can only trap very small insects. Larger and stronger bees and butterflies which act as its pollinators are not captured by the plant according to the team. Also this week, scientists have discovered the largest flying reptile in Australia, a pterosaur that looked like how humans imagine dragons. The pterosaur named Thapungaka Shawi had a spear-like mouth and a wingspan around 7 meters. According to the team, the animal would have been quite savage with its skull alone measuring just over 1 meter long. It had around 40 teeth perfectly suited to grasping fishes. Even though pterosaurs could fly, they were nothing like birds. The diverse group of reptiles were the very first backboned animals to master flight. Due to their thin walled and relatively hollow bones, fossilized remains of pterosaurs are rare and often poorly preserved. The discovery of this new species contributes to an improved understanding of pterosaur diversity. That's all on this week's Scientifics. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.